My name is Mike Cohn. I'm the president of Achieve, and uh, I am thrilled, absolutely thrilled, that all of you are here today for this seventh annual meeting of the American Diploma Project Network leadership team. I think maybe about half of you are here for the first time. And so one of the things we are doing this morning is giving uh, a little bit of an orientation and background to Achieve and to the American Diploma Project at this session. That's why we went around the country interviewing Achieve's board members in the last several weeks, uh, asking for their views on the issues that we're all facing. Uh, you can tell they are passionate, they're articulate, they're outspoken, and they will be helping all of us make the case for the work that we are collectively doing here uh, as the next several years uh, unfold. So I'm pleased that you were able to get a little bit of a feel for uh, the business leaders and governors on Achieve's board and see what, that they are committed to the same work that you are, you are doing. Let me tell you a little bit first of all about who's here and then we'll tell you a little bit more about uh, Achieve in the American Diploma Project. There are, or at least there would be if all the planes had landed last night, uh, about 300 people, more than 300 people here. This is the largest ADP network meeting that we have ever had in our seven, uh, in this being our seventh time of doing it. There are seven chief state school offices here. There are 13 governor's offices represented. There are 41 higher education leaders, 16 uh, state board members and state board staff. Uh, six state legislators, 11 leaders of state P20 organizations. There are 20 people from business organizations and other third party advocacy organizations in the states and 76 people from state education agencies. This is a diverse mix of people from the different sectors uh, that can provide leader, that must provide leadership uh, working together to improve uh, our schools and to move our education system forward. That's one of the hallmarks of the Diploma Project is we can assemble a diverse group like this to have honest conversations about really difficult topics, conversations by people who are then prepared to go back and get things done uh, in their states. So we are, again, thrilled that you are here. For uh, uh, many of you know that we spent some time, Achieve spent some time in this last year listening to you, asking uh, in the new environment that we're in with college and career readiness now pretty much a national priority rather than a theme for a handful of states as it was when we started. With Common Core Standards now adopted, with Race to the Top underway, with a variety of things underway, we asked what should Achieve and the ADP network be focused on as we go forward. And the answer that we got from you pretty clearly, pretty resoundingly was, if you will, stay the course. Uh, it's one thing to get a bunch of policies adopted. You're, we're far from done and Achieve is far from done in supporting you. So as we go forward, right, we will, be, we will continue to focus on the same issues that we have been focused on, on the college and career ready policy agenda. The ADP network remains the sort of mainstay of Achieve's uh, work with, with states. Uh, some of you know we have this other little project called PARC, uh, uh, working on common assessment. Many of you were involved in it, and that's a big deal, but the ADP network is the, is the main vehicle for Achieve's uh, work, with, uh, uh, work with states. Uh, so we will be focused on advancing the college and career ready agenda. We heard from many of you that we needed a, a, a more intense focus and clear discussion about what career readiness means. You'll see that discussion begin to unfold here in this meeting uh, and continue throughout uh, at least the next, the next year of Achieve's uh, work. Uh, we heard from many of you that, we, that you need support, that states need support to implement the policies that you've been persuaded uh, and uh, agreed to adopt. And so we will be turning a lot of our attention towards implementation issues, both of the, common, of the ADP agenda and also implementation of the Common Core standards. Much of that work will be done uh, with the park states. Uh, we'll focus not only on developing the assessments, but also helping states develop curriculum and instructional tools, supports for teachers and students. Those things that we've all known need to be part of a standards-based reform, but somehow uh, never quite got done in the systematic and high-quality manner that was needed in the past. I think we've got a shot at doing that uh, this time around in the future, and we're committed to helping, uh, helping that work. Uh, we've heard from a lot of, of, of states that uh, standards for mathematics and English language arts are really wonderful, but that's not the whole curriculum. 
Uh, and a real priority, as you heard our governors and business leaders talk about, for work in science. So we are uh, beginning an effort to support states in developing next generation science standards, and many of you here are involved in, uh, in that effort. We also heard, by the way, that there's a continuing need to help you find the tools and the strategies to communicate about this agenda to the educators and citizens and taxpayers and legislators in your states. And many of you know that's been a strong theme in Achieve's work, and that will uh, continue into the future as well. Hang on a second. Uh, uh, several months ago, we invited states to apply for a new uh, initiative that we call Future Ready. Uh, that will provide states with communications tools and build partnerships uh, to help support this agenda. I'm pleased to tell you that uh, today that we have selected four states to work on that initiative. Uh, that's Florida, Indiana, Massachusetts, and Ohio. We'll be starting work with them quite soon, and all of you will be able to benefit from that because the tools that are developed, the lessons that we learn about communicating around the issues that are so important are things that will be transferable uh, to all states in the ADP network and frankly all states in the country. So those are the kinds of things that Achieve has been doing and the kind of work that we've got coming ahead all surrounding and supporting the states in the ADP network. I'm particularly, I was particularly uh, pleased to hear Governor Haslam uh, uh, from uh, Tennessee, our newest board member, uh, talk about uh, uh, his understanding, an accurate one, uh, that Achieve works with, takes the states as they come. We understand tremendous differences among the states, uh, even though you're committed to a common agenda, and we're committed to doing exactly what he said, to continuing to work with each state to help it, help it move along a path at its own pace, but to be that force, a gentle force of friendly pressure that says you haven't done enough yet, there's still more to do, you need to still need to keep moving moving forward, and that is so much about what this network is about, is Achieve pushing you forward and you pushing each other forward. And for those of you, again, who are new to this, I think you will experience that over the course of conversations for the next day and a half. Uh, in a moment, I'm gonna give you a very brief overview of the issues that we'll be talking about at this conference, but there's one other thing that I'd like to do by way of helping all of you, but particularly the new participants in this uh, ADP conference, get a better understanding of what the Diploma Project Network has been all about, will be all about, and what it means for states. So while many of you here are new, there are more than enough people, more than a handful of people who have uh, been here for uh, each of the last six or seven years, uh, and they've gotten a little warning on this, um, so I'm going to call on a number of them and ask them to just say a few words about what being part of this network has meant to them and how it has helped them so you can get a better understanding of, uh, of what you can expect from the Diploma Project Network going, going forward. So uh, one of the people I'd like to call on, Phyllis Udecki, I haven't even seen you this morning, are you? There's Phyllis Udecki. Phyllis is the Secretary of, Edu of Education in Oklahoma and for the longest time had been the leader of the State Business Education Partnership. Phyllis, thank you. <laughs> We're kind of new to this microphone thing. <laughs> this is 21st this century collaboration right. going on. All right, Phyllis. <laughs> now my voice is larger than life. Um, <laughs> thank you, Mike. It's my pleasure to be here again and to share with you a little bit of our experiences. Uh, in Oklahoma with being in this fabulous network. First of all, uh, in about 05, we enacted legislation to revamp our high school graduation requirements. And of course, we had lots of help from all of you who were working in the same, uh, along the same endeavor, and we relied heavily, and this is not a commercial for Achieve, Mike didn't know I was gonna do this. Uh, we relied heavily on Achieve to be in a sort of a, uh, consultant capacity to work with us. We had a huge task force of people with varying opinions and so it was very helpful to have Achieve come in and uh, provide the information and data about what other states were doing 
to confirm that we weren't completely crazy in Oklahoma, that we were pursuing a path that was very similar to what other states were doing. It also provided us with an opportunity for real collaboration. Collaboration is one of those words that we like to use, but interagency collaboration, as all of you know, is very difficult to accomplish in a real way and to get real results. And having the business community involved um, can become even more complicated if you don't do it in a constructive way. And so uh, this was a, this team provided a, a real way for us to collaborate around standards and communicating expectations across varying levels in the system. Often we um, talk around that, but we don't ever really sit down at a table and do that. So this network has been very helpful in accomplishing that. And the involvement of the business community, although I'm bragging on my organization at this point, um, I can't tell you enough how helpful it is to have business involved because the presence of business keeps the focus, and I'm an educator with, by credential, but that keeps the focus on results and honest reporting of results. And uh, they'll sort of call you out when you start trying to pat yourselves on the back and inflate how, you know, inflate results and talk about how great we are. And so um, I think that the, biz the presence of the business community brings um, some honesty to the discussion and a reality check for all of us with education credentials. Um, the last thing I want to, uh, to share is that this, this was a very uh, real problem for us a couple of years ago. Uh, we had a new chairman of our state um, uh, Senate Education Committee, who was not a believer, um, was very concerned and questioning the um, that that uh, everyone needed to be prepared in that, with academic rigor. Uh, questioned that uh, college and work ready were the same thing or even similar, and it didn't matter how much uh, many of us talked, we were not convincing him. So a couple of years ago, we had an opportunity to bring him to this very meeting. And by the time he left, after two days, he had done a complete about face and now is a real champion for the cause. So we turned him into a believer by bringing him to this meeting and he got to hear from other states and from other people uh, what really what we were trying to convince him to do in Oklahoma. So there have been numerous uh, really positive results for us as being a, as a part of this uh, network, and I'm, I'm just thrilled to death that, that Achieve created it, and thank you very much, Mike. Thank you, Phyllis. Thank you for those kind words. What Phyllis did not tell you, by the way, <laughs> one of the other great things that uh, Phyllis in Oklahoma got from Achieve is John Kramen, uh, who up until last year actually worked for Achieve, uh, John was one of the consultants we sent out to help, uh, help that uh, sort of multi-sector team work together. So I just want to put you on notice. We'll send help, but we expect them to keep coming, coming back. We're more than happy to, to be there, but we need a team back here, too. Thank you, John. Uh, uh, let me go from Oklahoma to Ohio. Mark Real, where is Ohio? Mark is the uh, president and CEO of Kids Ohio, an advocacy organization there. Mark, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, we've, uh, during the period that this has been going on, we've had three different governors, three different state superintendents, three different chancellors of education, six different chairs of the education committee. And so what ACHIEVE has really helped us do is provide continuity, uh, introduce, as Phyllis said, people who have legitimate questions uh, to find out what you're doing in other states, to learn from the national research. Uh, we've also had changes in, in business leaders. Uh, we've had a CEO who was actually on the uh, Achieve board uh, whose company changed CEOs. And so I think what Achieve has helped us do is continue to educate people about these important issues as changes occur. Thank you, Mark. Um, a former Ohioan, Mitchell Chester, the commissioner of uh, Massachusetts. Okay, um, so, so uh, you know, a, a couple of thoughts um, about the role that Achieve's played, and, and as Mike said, I, I first became involved with Achieve when I was an official in Ohio, and now I'm commissioner in Massachusetts. 
the focus on making the high school diploma count is, is just so huge. And uh, those who know the Massachusetts story, I mean, I think arguably uh, uh, we could claim to be the state with the highest achievement. I think there's a lot of evidence for that. But despite that fact, uh, more than a third of our high school, public high school graduates who matriculate in higher ed end up being placed into non-credit bearing courses. And I've always been of the thought that unless you can bring uh, higher ed, business and industry employers, and, uh, and the K-12 sector together around the meaning of the high school diploma, you're really going nowhere. And that's been a huge strength of, of the American Diploma Project and the ACHIEVE work. Uh, here at our table, we have higher ed, we have business, um, and the K-12 sector, and without that, we're, we're not gonna get traction on figuring out how to give good signals to students, how to measure uh, whether or not students are college and career ready, uh, and so forth. Second, the second thing I'd highlight um, that, that I think uh, is, is just a real tribute to the leadership uh, at ACHIEVE. ACHIEVE has stayed, in my view, in the American Diplomats Project, has stayed on the cutting edge of, of sort of a, a policy framework that makes sense to a wide range of states who are coming at it from a wide range of contexts. And it is, uh, as the governor in the tape mentioned, it is a framework in which uh, you don't have to walk lockstep. Uh, it really is a framework in which states can take individual approaches uh, to figuring out how to make the high school diploma count, how to make the articulation between what a high school expects and what the world after high school, whether it's employers, whether it's higher ed expects, uh, how to get those aligned. And, and I think that's been remarkable. And, uh, and, it's, and it's manifest in uh, some of the, the standards work that's unfolded, uh, the, the, the common core standards work, the assessment work uh, that is currently unfolding through PARC. The final thing that I'd highlight that's, that's been real value, both in Ohio when I was there and for me in Massachusetts, she brings a range of uh, resources, technical assistance, uh, implementation support, actual kind of on the ground, roll up your sleeves. How do you, how do you convene a committee of higher ed folks, K-12 folks, and get them talking to each other uh, in a way that yields, uh, yields information and action and commitment uh, that gets you uh, further aligned. And I think that's, that's just a real good resource that the Chief brings. Thank you, Mitchell. Uh, a couple of other people I'd like to, to call on to kind of round out the perspectives that you hear from. Let me just point out, a number of people have commented on, on uh, uh, how we don't work with states in a sort of lockstep fashion, that we, we sort of help states find their own way. One of the advantages of that is that you have more states with more different approaches to common problems to learn from here, and so that's something that we value quite a bit. Uh, let me turn to Senator Rich Crandall from Arizona. Rich? Thanks, Mike. My name is Rich Crandall. I'm the Senate Education Chair in Arizona. A believer, but still <laughs> not an educated believer. And so uh, when Governor Napolitano put together our team, team back uh, about five years ago, right. our policy was really drifting all over. Like many of you, we have a high stakes exit, exit exam, but we give it sophomore year, and most kids pass it the first time. If you want a recipe for disaster, have your graduation exam sophomore year, and everybody pass it. So we, we come to achieve. We sequester ourselves with our consultant. We had a great, the gentleman's name from Oregon. Um, he rocked, he was a great guy. Bill, yes. And so we, uh, Porter, yes. <laughs> we, we come together and realize this isn't working for us at all. Go back, and Governor uh, Napolitano is who had appointed me. I'm, I'm a Republican. She's obviously a Democrat. But we get back home and we, real, we realize that this contract is up for another five years for this high stakes test. At literally 1 a.m. in the morning, she lets me sneak in a little tiny provision that the contract can only be renewed for one year. This is against the wishes of, the, of our state superintendent, who was just furious. But we have no plan. You know, we've come to the ACHIEVE meetings twice before this, and we realize we have no plan. And so we sneak this little provision in, 1 a.m. in the morning, it passes on the last day of session, and all of a sudden it was a big wake-up call. We take our ACHIEVE team, create a task force. Three weeks ago, we launched in Arizona the Grand Canyon Diploma. It is a board exam-based exam, um, 
diploma where you come in and prove what you know. Forget seat time, forget Carnegie units. You just come in here, learn as much as you can, prove to us what you know, and you're a high school graduate. It could be as early as sophomore year if you're that, if you're that aggressive. But it's a, it would not have happened without Achieve. And so Mike, we thank you for that. Well, thank you, and thank you for that story. I think we all have a lot to learn from the Grand Canyon experience, and we'll watch that un unfold. Uh, one, one other person, Tammy Chun from uh, Governor Abercrombie's office in Hawaii. Tammy, thank you. Good morning. I, um, just to give you a sense of how valuable this being a part of the network has been to us, we have a team here that is going to spend a day and a half in the conference, and we're going to spend more time getting here and going home than we spend in the conference. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, <coughs> If you'll indulge me in Hawaii voyaging and in being in the canoe is a good metaphor for a lot of things that we do. And I think that ADP, our experience with ADP really lends itself to that. I think that, um, so three points to make. The first is that I think when we became a part of ADP, we didn't necessarily change the destination that we were headed to, but it gave us a new sort of star to navigate by college and career readiness and the work that we've done in Hawaii around that has really been anchored in our work in ADP. We are talking about it at dinner last night and we would not have been prepared for a race to the top if we had not been a part of this work. The second is that um, being a part of this network really helped us to think about how K-12 and higher ed in particular are going to paddle together. Um, I think there's a lot of work that we do in that where we have a lot of rhetoric and kind of belief that we're interdependent, but we don't have a lot of shared policy action. And the ADP work gave us a chance to really have some shared policy action. So to give you a couple of concrete examples, um, in 2008, okay. our Board of Education established a college and career ready opt-in diploma. And then our University Board of Regents changed one of their scholarships to provide an incentive for students to earn that diploma. Um, a second example is that our Department of Education adopted the Algebra II and of course test, and then subsequently the university faculty across nine of our ten campuses accepted the Algebra II performance for placement from our high school graduates. So a chance here to have action on both sides of um, K-12 and higher ed. And then the last one is that Achieve has really been in in the canoe with us here. Um, Jen Vranick has been our consultant the whole time and been right there with us. She and I were just laughing about whether or not I should say this, but um, we are an SBAC state and we're a governing <laughs> member. So we appreciate that Achieve is not only about PARC for some of us. <laughs> But um, when we had to withdraw from Park because we were a governing member for SBAC, it felt like breaking up with Matt Gandel. <laughs> <laughs> That's how he felt also. Yeah. Well, and you know, we really have appreciated the just-in-time support and the friendly pressure as we've pursued the college and career ready agenda. And that has been from everything from what do we do now that there's no consortium around the Algebra 2 and of course test to what are the alternatives to Algebra 2 um, to what's an opt-in, what do they look like across states if we're talking about a default diploma. So it has really been just in time, um, very helpful advice and um, support. Thank you, Tammy. Well, what we wanted to do in this session is give you a sense of uh, things that states that are in the network have been doing are the ways in which they've drawn on Achieve's resources, and in the process, give you an idea of the kinds of things that you could begin to learn from other states that are in the network. So I hope you will carry that with you as we uh, now launch the, the conference. Over the course of the day, you'll hear from national experts on a variety of key issues. You'll have opportunities to uh, uh, participate in uh, breakout sessions where you can explore some issues in a bit more depth. There will be time later today for uh, you to meet uh, as a state team and consider where you've 
come and where you're going. Uh, and uh, we think all those experiences ought to help you uh, think through how to move forward in your state. Uh, in order to move forward now, first of all, we're getting some chairs up here. Uh, and at the same time, we're going to ask in a moment our pa panelists to come as we make the shift from this opening session to the first uh, panel. So thank you for your attention. Thank you for your participation in this session. And uh, we look forward to getting the, the uh, conference started. Let me call on uh, Mike Cassily, Kaya Henderson, Stan Jones, Rich Casis, and Lillian Lowry to join me up here, please. And we will then immediately start the next session. Thank you.